Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm sharing two quick peppermint slash candy cane themed flowers. And I'm using peppermint or candy cane, but I really mean just the reds and the whites. These are two classic Christmas colors. However, if you're sick of poinsettias, which I am just a little bit, if you're sick of just looking at poinsettias or making poinsettias, this is something that you can do. You could take those Christmas colors and just make a different theme out of it. Candy canes are fun, I think. They're sweet and generally I only eat peppermint candy at this time of the year, so let's get started. So for this flower, I am using template 18, which is basically my favorite template to use because it is super easy. I can curl the petals if I want. Generally, I don't because it makes a very beautiful flower very quickly, but I don't have to do a whole lot of cutting. So I tend to use this. I did use this in my Halloween flower display. But basically, you can use any template that you have. And the idea for this flower here is just that you are alternating the colors in the paper flowers. So for this particular flower, I'm gonna go through a rundown of what petals I use because it's already assembled. But this is a five and a half inch wide petal. This is a five inch wide petal, four and a half inch wide, and then four inch wide. So I just go down by half inch increments. If you have my templates, you know that they're structured that way. And then basically I have this flower center here, which I will show a quick tutorial on because I'm gonna make something different for my next flower. Here I've sort of stacked it so that it has this stripe look to it. So I think it adds to that candy cane or like a peppermint swirl theme. So this flower is very easy. And I think what you can do is you can alternate the way the petals look so that you can create different flowers with that red and white stripe look, but they are all different and you can still just use one template. Okay, so here are the petals for my next flower and if you can guess by the way I stacked it, I'm going to make another flower where I have sort of a two-tone look. I call it two tones, not two tones. There's two colors and what I do is I like to stack one color on top of another and then it gives me this petal shape and I like this because it really does remind me of candy canes or the peppermint swirls when there's the red and the white. And this is exactly what I did with my spiderweb flower for Halloween. I like to stack the two colors because it adds more dimension to it. So this is what I'm gonna do again. I'm gonna put together this flower very quickly so you can see what it looks like. But if you're curious, I'm gonna go through the petals that I have here. This is a six inch wide petal with a five and a half inch white petal. And then this is a five and a half inch petal with a five inch wide white petal. And this is a five inch wide red petal with a four and a half inch wide white petal. So, so basically I sort of use the same size petals. I'm just making sure that I'm just stepping down as I'm making these. So if you are interested in more of a detailed uh, account of what petals that I use, I will leave it in the description box. I just feel like this is something I've made many times. I'm just showing you more of the idea than a tutorial. If you do have any questions, please leave it down below. But again, as I've done in previous tutorials, all you need to do is just take this white petal here, or any, if you're doing white and then red, so all you do is just glue the smaller petal onto the bottom petal, like that. And then you take a pair of scissors and then you cut a slit. Since this is the biggest petal, I'm cutting a slit of about two and a half inches. And then this one is just something similar. I will cut a smaller slit and I will repeat that process for this last petal here. I do just use three petal layers um, in total. There are six petals, but I'm using three layers because I am gluing it like this. I think this is a good size. When you're making the petals like this, it does take a little more time because you have to cut extra petals. You do have to glue one petal on top of another, but I think that the effort is worth it in the end. I have definitely kind of gotten over poinsettias. I definitely bought a lot more than I thought. Costco had a four pack of poinsettias for I think $18 and that was a steal, but I think I'm a little saturated with poinsettias. So this is my trusty go-to template. And so I have made all the other petals so that this process can be quicker. Okay, so now I have all my petals here. I'm gonna to put together the flower, but I put a time lapse, throw on some Christmas music so you can see what it looks like. But again, it's essentially it is something I've done before. I can link some similar videos down below if you are new to this channel and you haven't seen this before. Okay, let's get started. Thank you. 
Okay, so now I'm done gluing together the flower and it's something that I really enjoy and really like. I think everyone has a particular style of flowers that they like and I think this one's mine. I do love the two different colors. It just adds a nice little outline to each petal and I think it looks great. So now I'm just gonna work on a flower center. So I have three eight and a half by 11 sheets of this fringe cut here and I have three of each color and I may not use all of them. I decided that for this one on camera as I'm filming, I'll decide what I like best. This one I made beforehand and I will show that very quickly in the end, but this one I'll make something different. So I have three sheets. They are a quarter inch cut if you're interested. I do have a tutorial on how you can make this in the Silhouette or Cricut machines. I will link that below. And so what I wanna do is I want a center that's different than this one. This one's more of a stripey center. So I may get one that is just a big poofy ball, which are my favorite types of centers are the ones that are very big. So I may just alternate the sheets that I use from red to white and just roll it like a traditional center where it's very easy. So for the center, what I may do is just something simple, but I'll alternate the colors. So let's get started. I'm going to stack these two together to get more space. So for the first one, what I'll do is I will just glue both sides or both edges together. This is the easiest type of center. And I, I do tend to gravitate towards a big poofy, fluffy center, but not one that is very detailed. So here is one sheet of the red. So here is one of the red and I can do one of the white. It's best to glue half of each sheet first and then glue the other half. I find that this way the glue hasn't dried on either side if I'm a little slow at gluing it together. Okay from here you can do two different things. You can take one sheet here in this case the white one and stack it on top of the red and glue it together. And then what will happen as you are rolling it is that it starts to look like it's striped, but what happens is as you continue to roll it, and I'm not gluing it, I'm just kind of showing it for example, you'll see that they're kind of mixed together. So here we'll give you more of a like mixed red and white center. If you want something that looks kind of like a pom-pom, um, like a cheerleader pom-pom where the different colors are mixed, this is something you can do. The second thing you can do is you could just take the white sheet, and again, I'm just showing it as an example so I won't glue it just yet. But you can roll just the white sheet like this, and then you can roll the red one next. And you can alternate. So I think that because I am having these two different colors here, I'll do the second method. But the first one's very easy and you get sort of a mixed color in the center. But here I do like the look of having that striped, especially because of the candy cane slash peppermint theme here. So I like that striped look. So I'll go ahead and roll this first sheet here and actually glue it. So the first one's always easy and I do want this one to be a little bit thicker in the center with the color and I'll show you what I mean. Okay so now that I have the white one done what I do next is just simply wrap this one around the white and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I am doing just two or I think and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have full like revolutions around so if I only wanted one layer of red around, I would stop just about here. So you can see that the red just covered the white. So I think I can get at least two out of this. So I'm gonna roll it around again. And I wanna stop where at least two of like the times around wrapping, at least two of the times that I went around are there. So if I wanted to stop here, I would just rip this amount off but let's see if we can get another turn around, which I think we can do. Okay, so what I meant by that is that I went around the white three times. And so as you can see, as you go around more and more times, the base gets thicker. So I was wondering how many times I can wrap it around fully. 
What happens is there's a little bit left over and it may not matter to you enough to snip it, but I'm going to just pull the leftover piece out and that way I know that it's wrapped around three times with the red. So then from here, all I wanna do is do one more time around with another sheet of white. So this is simple, you can just go around as many times as you like to create a fuller center. If you wanna just stop here, that's also a great idea. I think it looks fine. So if I had just stopped here, this is what it would look like. And I think that's absolutely perfect. However, I tend to have bigger centers and I think I have enough sheets, so I'll go ahead and keep going. So the same idea applies here. I wanna make sure that I have enough revolutions around the base and I want it even. If you don't necessarily care about that, then you don't have to do that. So there is one time around, that's what it looks like, and I'll go another time around the base. Okay, so here, if you ignore this piece, as you can see, I've gone around twice with the white, and I do have this much left over. If you don't care, go ahead and just glue the rest of that. However, I want it to look even, so I'm going ahead I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that piece off. It hurts a little bit because it takes forever to cut these, but that's okay, I want more of an even look. So now it looks more like a starburst. You can see that there is sort of a striation going on here now with the white, red, and then white again. So I'm gonna keep going with another sheet of red. I could stop here if I wanted. I think, again, I have the sheets cut out. I'll go ahead and keep making it a bigger flower center. And the bigger you go around the center, the less uh, times you can roll wrap around, but that should be fine. I think it's getting pretty big. I think I will only be able to wrap it around twice because the last time we only had tw two times around. But that's okay. And it will start to become a little bit harder to manage. And I like to keep track of where I started. So this is the point where I started wrapping. And I keep an eye and a finger on that so that I know where to stop. And again, this is sort of the extra here that I'm just going to rip off. So here it's starting to blend very, very easily. I think this is where I'll stop. Let's see. Yep, it's a big enough center. So I'll just go ahead and glue that to the flower. This actually kind of reminds me of 4th of July because of the red and the white. So this is obviously something you can do for July 4th as well, especially because the red and the white reminds me of the stripes on the United States flag. I know not everyone here is from the US, but that's just a thought. So here, I'm done with my flower and I really, really like this because it really, it's festive. It's making me happy just looking at it. But obviously there are different ways that you can make the flower. Again, I'm only using one template and you can imagine that there are other ways that you can play around with the colors to get a different looking flower. And you can add these sort of as a, you know, candy cane theme backdrop. What would be fun too is if you get some candy canes and actually glue them to the center or just like stick them in the center that someone can pull out as sort of a treat. Um, these flower centers tend to hold things in there. For instance, I'm gonna use a glue stick because I don't have candy canes on me, but you can just thread it through if you can imagine that this is a candy cane. This is pretty bad improv, but roll with me here. So if you can imagine that you can probably stick candy canes in here and someone can just go and take them. So this is a great thing you can do to hold candy canes if you're having just a little get together and you want to make it fun. So here I'm sticking you know, fake candy canes through. So it works, it's just an idea. And I really, really enjoy this one. I tend to, as I've said many times before, gravitate towards big centers. So this is the one that I like most. But this one's a little interesting and you can make it fuller if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and show that really quickly. So with my last two sheets, because I only use four sheets there, what I do is I, do have a video on this, but it's kind of buried. It's a very old video. I'm not sure anyone looks at those anymore. But instead of gluing it edge to edge and lined up, what I do for this flower center here is I actually offset it. So generally I offset about an inch. So here, this point here, I'll move this towards the center of the video. So this point here actually does not touch this top point here. 
So if I can name this top point and bottom point, they do not ma meet up. So here I'm actually gluing it, this top point, about an inch down from the bottom point. And from there it gives me a little bit of an offset and sometimes it's tricky to glue. So I like to glue the top one first because I am offsetting that. So I did glue here. And then I'm going to move over about an inch from the bottom point and then I glue from there. So this is just great to start and from there I turn it upside down and I know how much to glue because it's short on this end. And there I just glue the rest. So you can see here you don't have that perfect loop, it's off center and here is where I make this type of center. I do the same with the red sheet. What you want to do is you want to pay attention to how you're gluing it. You might accidentally glue it the other way and you'll get a different direction. So that's something to play with if you are looking for different paper flower centers to make. But just know that if, if I am gluing it like this, so here I took the top portion and I'm gluing it to the left. If you're doing it that way and you want to keep it that way, make sure you're paying attention to how you're gluing it. I did make that mistake earlier. That's what I did earlier. I wasn't paying attention and I glued it incorrectly. And then from there, I actually had to remake it because the center would have been wrong. The loops would have gone the other way. It doesn't just flip over. Like you can't just turn it over and get the same effect. So just something to keep in mind. And then from here, all I do is I stack them one on the another. And kind of to the point that I was saying before, you see that the loops are kind of going to the right here. If you had accidentally glued it the other way, they would be opposite. So the next step is to glue these right on top of each other. So I stack them. Here I do match the tip to the other point. So, so here it's nice to line up each piece of paper. So now I have one piece because I've glued it that way. So what I tend to like is white in the middle. I think I started that white in the middle here and white in the middle here. So, but you can also just do the red in the middle. Let's do the red in the middle because then that'll be something different. But essentially all you do from here is that you just start rolling as you do with any flower center. But here it's a little tricky because it is thick. So I give it a little bit of a space. I don't roll it as tight in the center here. And you'll, you will have to kind of coax it through. So here is where I start gluing. It'll help so that it doesn't fall apart as you keep rolling. And then glue the last bit here. And when you turn it around, make sure that it is glued properly. This is what you get. So this one actually reminds me of the Target dollar spot or the Target like logo. This one's a little bit better because the red is more contained than it is in here. So this one, it's the same size sheet, but I switched the way that I rolled it. I had the red in the center, whereas this one's white in the center. So you can see here that you could just keep going if you add more sheets. Let's go ahead and do that. I do have two extra sheets here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'll fast forward through this so you can see what it looks like. So as you can see, I did add that second piece and where we did have that very tight um, rolled center here and it was really nice and even, it's going to start getting a little bit out of hand as you keep going because of the sheer bulk of this piece. And so originally it was really tightly rolled and it was closer together. Here, because there's not much space as you're rolling more and more around the top, you see it's smaller on the bottom than it is on the top. You get this sort of fanned out effect and so if you like that, it's something you can do. If you don't like how it sort of just flares out like this, what you can do is just keep that one first piece where it's nicely rolled and tight, and then you can just add um, another piece where it's um, glued like I did in this center here, and then you can just add to it on the outside. Just know that if you keep adding more and more pieces, this is the look that you'll get. You won't get nice big tight center like this, you'll start seeing like this fanned out effect like here. 
I tend to like it because then it covers a space around the flower center, but it depends on what you like. This is obviously bigger than this one, so this is just an idea. And if I've said it once, I've said it many times, I do like this one better. This is, tends to be my favorite style of paper flowers. But hopefully that gives you some ideas of what you can do for your own Christmas party or get together or whatever you're making. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Happy holidays and thanks for watching. Bye.